Thor! The God of Thunder! The Hunter from the Future! Wait, I think that was your... Yeah, that last line was your... Ah, uh, whatever. Whore, roar, boar, door... It's all... It all rhymes in the end. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another movie review vlog. And this week, I am going to be covering the Thor movie trilogy in preparation for Thor Ragnarok that is coming out this week. I'll probably catch it on uh, Friday or Saturday. Work's been a little busy still, but I'm still going to make time to watch a two and a half hour movie, which I'm very looking forward to. And with that said, I'm also going to be digging, diving right on into the Thor movie series as well, starting with the very first one. And the, and the funny thing is that after watching the first two movies, is that they have, they're kind of a bit of a mess in particular because they don't have no straight timeline or continuity with, unlike the other Marvel movies with Iron Man or Captain America or something like that. With Thor, it's like more or less a staple, like they have to get one out at some point to meet a certain superhero movie quota. And uh, with this one, it's okay. I mean, it's good. Uh, they don't really do dive that much into Thor's origin story because it pretty much picks up right where it starts, which is Thor being a warrior that he is, and he was about to be knighted king by his father, but through his narrow-minded actions, he pretty much uh, cost Asgard great dealy with a huge war, with starting up a huge war with the Frost Giants, which of course Odin pretty much just casted him out, cursed his hammer to pretty much say if he be worthy, he possesses the power of Thor, boop, chuck it out there. And then we got the a good bulk of the movie, Pretty much with uh, Chris Hemsworth playing as Thor in a fish out of water type story on Earth where he's powerless, he doesn't know what else to do other than trying to get his hammer back while also meeting some uh, researchers and friends along the way. Now, I will have to say that some of the side characters are really good, but they do have some flaws in between. Normally, with, the, with these movie review vlogs, I like to start with the actors first. A lot of the actors were good, great. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, like I said before, he's a phenomenal as Thor. And of course, with his accent and everything else, it pretty much blends with the character itself. And of course, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, he's phenomenal as well, along with Anthony Hopkins and a few others as well. There are some of the some of the other supporting characters, like The Warriors 3, Sif, Jane Foster, were okay for the most part. But there are some other characters who were just borderline annoying. Yep, yeah, I'm looking at you, Kat Dennings. I really can't stand her for the for the for the, uh, the entire movie series. I really can't stand her at all. She has one good line, and that is pretty much just whipping out the taser and tasing Thor. And that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much her only purpose. Other than that, she's annoying as hell. And they kind of crowbar into there as the comedic relief of the group. But oh, I just find her so insufferable when I see her on screen. <sighs> but apart from that, uh, there's some of the other things I didn't like. The Warriors three and the characters who played Warrior, the Warriors 3 and Sif were okay, like I said before, but they were also a bit of a letdown. Sure, they can hold their own against mindless frost giants and other creatures, but when it comes to fighting their own vessel, or in this case, the destroyer near the third act of the movie, they seem to be having a really hard time taking down a hollow husk full of energy, which... Really? Okay, with, with those negatives out of the way, some of the more positive things were this movie pretty much shows us a more expanded uni Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe with Asgard and a few other planets as well. Now, they did a lot. I love the whole visualization of Asgard. I mean, there's a, so much to, to see and so much to look at, especially when you can see that they pulled a lot from the Jack Kirby uh, drawing era of the 60s and 70s, and it looks quite phenomenal, from the rainbow bridges to the palace itself and everything else. But they kind of uh, move things pretty quickly because they gotta get the story going and everything else, that I understand. But at the same time, it just kind of slows down a bit for the supporting characters and also the New Mexico town and everything else. And pretty much the overall plot uh, for Thor is that he's powerless in order for him to get it back. For Thor, he starts off being a selfish jerk, but of course, near the third act, he becomes more good-natured and kind-hearted after interacting with humans, which is actually pretty good. And I've talked about this uh, before a long time ago when I used to do the Rotten Tomatoes page and everything else. There's some great special effects in here. They use the everything from the lightning to the green screen work really well. The fight scenes were pretty good uh, from Thor, you know, fighting off frost giants or him just basically being powerless but also handling shield security guards, which was pretty good too because they got to throw in some action scenes here and there. And overall, 
I would say this is a pretty decent movie, you know? Not one of their best origin stories, without a doubt, uh, but I would have to say that it is a really, really good, fleshed out movie. More or less a staple, you know, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe franchise. Just like some of the other movies as well, which I have a feeling with Thor, you know, Thor 2 was also a bit of a staple as well. And I have a feeling Thor Ragnarok is going to be a staple, pretty much. Which, staples are fine, they add some sort of canon and continuity to things, uh, to a more expanded universe, but overall, it's just like, a staple's a staple, you know, you just look at it, it holds things together, and that's it, and there's no really, uh, expectations for it. Um, but overall, I would have to, I keep saying overall, I, I do apologize for that. Final rating, four, not the greatest origin story, but a good staple. And with that said, I will have to give it four out of five stars. And uh, with that, I uh, hope you guys like this, and if you guys like what you see, feel free to subscribe, hit the notifications button, and all that other fun junk. And of course, if you guys want to support me, because with the YouTube apocalypse the way it is now, feel free to hit me up on Patreon for the $1 a month club, just so I can, you know, stay, just so I can afford some more ramen for the week, and also, uh, if you guys have any other movie request vlogs for me to review, just feel free to hit me up on Patreon as well. And check out all my other reviews, because I need every little bit I can to circulate those links to get the ad revenue back up. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but I gotta play the game like everyone else. And like that said, I will see you all next time.